Good afternoon. The December 2nd, 2014 meeting of the Oklahoma City Water Utilities Trust will be in order. First item on the agenda is the minutes from the last meeting. Move approval. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the minutes. Voting, please. Minutes are approved. Next item is a consent docket. Move approval subject to individual consideration. Second. A motion and a second to approve the consent docket. Are there individual items that need to be considered separately? Hearing none, voting, please. Consent docket's approved. Next item, items for individual consideration. The first one is a request for proposals for the management and operation of the marina and concessions at Lake Draper. Move approval. Second. Any comments or questions concerning that? Uh, Mr. Chairman, just, just a couple of things. Uh, thank you very much for your motion. We're, we're working again toward a, an upgrade, hopefully an upgrade with a long-term relationship at the marina. Uh, staff has added some terminology about, about flexibility, uh, provided we get a, a different creativity in the offer. And we're looking forward to uh, getting to review proposals once again. Okay. Thank you. Any other comments or questions? Voting, please. Item 4A is approved. Next item is the presentation by staff on the industrial waste pretreatment program. Uh, Mr. Chairman, uh, Wastewater Treatment Superintendent Perry Sultani is with us this afternoon to describe the proposed changes to industrial pretreatment fees. I, I, you'll find that we have we've not made changes in a very long time. We're proposing a phase in and, and a different way of looking at the fees that we think will be will work well for our customers. Okay. Good afternoon. Is that changing? Oh, okay, sorry. <laughs> The main reason for uh, the industrial pretreatment program is to minimize the risk of extra strength and hazardous waste from entering into the sanitary sewer system. Uh, the program is uh, required by the Clean Water Act and uh, the cost of the program is uh, required to be recovered by the program. Uh, it also uh, protects the wastewater workers, uh, treatment plants, and the sanitary sewer from, pos uh, from possible exposure. I'm sorry. The, the program consists of uh, three types of industries. Uh, one is the federal categorical industries that uh, uh, such as uh, metal finishers and uh, industrial waste uh, treatment facilities. Uh, these industries have a higher potential due to their uh, nature of discharge to damage the treatment plants and negatively impact the environment. The second one are the significant industries, and uh, these are the industries that have, have more than 25,000 gallons per day discharge on average and uh, they could potentially have a higher uh, organics and solids and oil and grease. The third in the category is the non-significant and the minor. Uh, uh, these are uh, primarily the restaurants and small clinics. To, currently, we have uh, over 1,900 customers consisting of uh, 36 federal categorical and uh, 112 significant and uh, so over 1,700 non-significant and minors. The current cost of the program is a little over uh, $1.1 million, uh, consisting of salaries and benefits, and uh, education program, laboratory costs, and inspection and sampling. The revenue for the program currently is $53,000 from the permit fees and uh, 
and uh, about $756,000 from the BOD and TSS, uh, the extra strength sewer charges. And uh, that would uh, result in a deficit of uh, $328,000 per year for the program. The existing permit fees uh, uh, are uh, $500 for the first year for categoricals and $250 for the following four years. And then uh, it's $50 for significant and non-significant and $25 for the following four years. The term of the permit is five years for each permit. We are proposing to align fees with industry significance based on their discharge characteristics and uh, have a permit application fee of one time of $500 for the categorical and $50 for the other industries. And uh, apply a monthly industrial waste fee based on the industry category and the discharge molly. We are proposing to recover the cost uh, phase it in three years, and uh, that will translate into uh, about four cents per thousand gallons up to 10 cents per thousand gallons in year three for categorical, and three cents per thousand gallons of discharge to seven cents per thousand gallons of discharge for significant, and two cents per thousand gallon and up to six cents in year three for non-significant. The percent increase uh, for categorical will range from 0.18 percent up to in year one to up to 1.78 percent in year three. For significant, would be from 0.25 percent to 1.05 percent, and for non-significant, from 0.22 percent to 0.92 up to 0.92 percent for non-significant. In terms of dollars, uh, for uh, would be for categorical, since it is based on their discharge, someone will have a really low increase, uh, like from one dollar in year one up to uh, in year three. For the ones that have a high discharge, uh, about twenty-eight hundred thirty dollars. And for significant, would be from seven dollars to four hundred ninety dollars at the end of the three years and uh, non-significant from $1 to $39. We're recommending to replace the existing fee structure and implement application fee instead of permit fee of one time of $500 for the categorical and uh, $50 for others and apply a monthly discharge fee based on their volume of discharge and the industry's uh, category. Uh, I think we have uh, some uh, handouts that shows examples of what typical industries will see in their bills and uh, in front of you, and I'll be happy to answer any questions you might have. Uh, Harry, one of the things that I realize I left out of the memo is how long has it been since we changed fees? Okay, I don't think it's ever, it's been a long, long time. It's been over 20 years at least, and I'm not sure even it has changed. I, it could be original, but I know for the last 20, 25 years it hasn't changed. How much money will this generate in terms of the, comparing to our costs are? Uh, the money generated currently? Currently, it's $53,000 from the permit fees that we are collecting, and then the surcharge is around $750,000 per year. Will this, will this increase cover our costs? Uh, our costs will stay the same. I know they will. One point. We are increasing the fees. Yes, we, we targeted moving fees toward our total cost. We have 
358,000 additional funds that, that would bring us to complete par with the cost of the program? Yes. Uh, we are sh currently, we are short of $328,000 per year. And implementing the fees uh, on the discharge per thousand gallon, in the end of year three, we'll uh, balance that. Okay. We'll, uh, that's we'll, that's what I'm yes, at the end of the year three. Do we have any idea what other similar sized cities charge for the same kind of service? Are we going to be consistent with, with Tulsa or you know, Little Rock or whatever? We have not. We have not specifically collected the information. Yeah. Go ahead. You know, we have uh, contacted some cities, and uh, they all have a different way of collecting different mm -hmm. permit fees. And uh, we're not even sure if they are uh, recovering all the costs or not. But uh, but increasing the permit fee uh, and trying to recover three hundred twenty-eight thousand dollars. We felt like it would put a burden on uh, smaller uh, mm -hmm. industries that they don't do a lot of big business and all that. Because the bills, the, if uh, you look at the bills that they pay, even though the monthly is going to be significant, but percentage-wise, is not that much. And uh, and also, uh, they have uh, more uh, uh, impact because of the volume they discharge, because of the nature of their uh, pollutant or the work they do uh, to do harm to the uh, wastewater system. And as a result, uh, we uh, spend extra effort on those categories, on those industries. Do we have a feel for how many new industrial customers we'll be adding over the next three to five years? Uh, that varies. A lot of it depends on the economy. Mm -hmm. and uh, but. Uh, for the past few years, uh, we have added some, but not really significant. Okay, because I just, you, yeah. you said at the end of three years, we'll be in balance with our costs today. With, with I'm cost assuming today. our costs yes. are going to go up a little bit over the next three years. Well, and, uh, yeah, I, I think uh, if, the, if the cost goes up, uh, uh, we will be due to probably additional customers, and then hopefully the revenue will go up okay. uh, with it. So at the end of three years, we would propose another increase, is that? Well, I, I would I would anticipate yeah. looking at it again in three years. Uh, we well, since we're including labor in here, it's obviously right. going to go up. So. That's what I'm thinking. That's good. Thank you. Thank you. Any other mm -hmm. comments, questions? We have a motion on the resolution. Move approval. Second. Motion and a second to approve the resolution. Voting, please. Resolution is approved. Next item is item. C is um, is there a need for executive session? I okay. move we approve the item. We have a second. Second. I have a motion and a second to approve the engagement letter with Andrews Davis. Voting please. Engagement letter is approved. Next item is item D. We do not need executive session right. for that. I have a motion to strike. Move to strike. Second. Motion and a second to strike. Voting, please. I'm stricken. Next item is the uh, uh, item from trustees. Any comments from trustees? Just a question, Mr. Chairman. I had to step out of the room. I'm sorry. I had a phone call I had to take. And uh, on item 3C, uh, it's a project having to do with uh, uh, clear wells. And uh, they, we show on the the explanation, engineering fee increasing $76,900, but the numbers don't add up to that. They had a total amended contract of $579,000. How do those relate to each other? Is the $76,000 just for this particular effort, or we've had four amendments or three previous amendments that total well over $76,000? That's correct. It, it, this change is $76,000. I will find the error and and bring you that information separately. I, unless Mr. Randy knows off the top of his head, uh, we clearly made a typo that I didn't catch. Um, meanwhile, let me be clear about what we're doing here. Items C and items J are, are related. Both deal with the Hafner Clearwells. Uh, over time, um, we just go and during the warranty period, we discovered that the 
Clearwell uh, was not uh, completely structurally stable. The contractor and the engineer were going to work for us to fix the structural problem. So okay. in addition to this increase, we'll see an increase in construction costs as well. No, I think we. I think this is it for construction costs. This is the mediated uh, warranty. The twelve million dollars is. Yes. Thank you. We'll get you the information about the, about the engineering costs in our error. Okay. The seventy-six thousand nine hundred is the cost of the uh, uh, the engineer to monitor the uh, uh, the change order. The change order itself is at no cost to Oklahoma City. It's the cost that's being borne by the contractor. Uh, the seventy-six hundred, uh, the seventy-six thousand will be retained from his final fees to pay for the engineer. That's the arrangement that's been made. Okay. Well, then why is it seventy-six thousand? There is an increase if we're going to get it back, and it's not going to cost the city any money. Uh, the actual cost of the uh, modification uh, is is borne by the contractor. We don't know all the details of that. That's the negotiated settlement in terms of our cost for monitoring his work, okay, uh, for for five years because we're concerned about the settlement of the roof on the clear well. Mr. Chairman, if I if I may, sure. the contract creates a relationship between us and the engineering firm. <coughs> the uh, reimbursement that will be coming or retained from the construction company and retainage uh, will come through us because we want to create a direct relationship with the engineer and not have the money being passed from the contractor to the engineer. So to, to create the independence of the engineer. Thank you. That's good enough. Okay. Again, the next item is the uh, presentation concerning the municipalization of Tinker. Thank you. I'm Bob Woodhouse from MWH, and I'm joined here today with uh, Paul Rickboss from Guernsey and Ron Cass, who's a water system specialist with MWH. I'll kick off the presentation, and then Ron will come up and talk about some of the specifics of the alternate proposal. So the first slide uh, just reminds us where we are, which phase we're in. We're in this procurement phase, a 15-month period where we're working to prepare a proposal for the 50-year operations and maintenance of the water and wastewater systems at Tinker Air Force Base. Let's zoom into this procurement phase, which is shown here. This is the work plan for the procurement phase. <clears throat> As you can see, the calendar running along the bottom there, we're, we're here in December. And this is the fourth out of five project updates that we're providing to the trust to provide an updates on us, on the work we're doing as the work progresses to inform the trust so you can make a better informed decision when we complete the proposal and prepare to send it to the government. Our next one will be held next month uh, in January, and that will be on the pricing, and that will be the final trust update before we move into what we've termed confidential briefings leading up to the proposal submittal in uh, March uh, of next year. So now I'll invite Ron Cass to come and talk about the uh, alternate proposal, which is the subject for today's presentation. Thank you. The uh, alternate proposal is uh, basically to supply Tinker Air Force Base using the uh, current city system uh, as opposed to the wells under the base contract. Uh, that alternative uh, reduces the uh, uh, amount of infrastructure necessary. Uh, by eliminating some of the booster stations, eliminating the use of the wells, uh, and uh, in, in specific to chemical addition, uh, eliminates the uh, chlorine addition and the fluoride addition, which is done on base now. Uh, this approach uh, improves the reliability and the uh, water quality, uh, reduces the amount of equipment that needs to be maintained over the service life, and uh, centralizes the pumping. Uh, there's also less risk associated with this in that there is no uh, 
uh, the, the chlorine or the fluoride uh, on site any longer. The uh, key benefits that uh, are under the alternate proposal uh, include that uh, reduction in risk for them as well as um, with confidence we can say that the water quality uh, is more consistent. The water quality, excuse me, the water supply volume is also more reliable coming from uh, this source. There we go. Uh, this, uh, this aerial is uh, basically the boundary of the Tinker Air Force Base uh, system. Uh, one of the major features or, uh, that would go in under the alternate proposal includes additional storage uh, and uh, as well as a uh, retrofit on the existing booster pump station 19. Uh, in addition to that, the third component under the alternate proposal would be some upsizing and additional lines, uh, which noting the degree of, uh, of uh, crowded utility corridors, et cetera, there's a little bit of uh, uh, effort of all, uh, uh, higher cost involved in doing that work. Uh, part of this uh, alternative includes uh, SCADA uh, to be able to communicate off base for the controls of the various system components. The uh, lastly is the, the timing of this service transition. Uh, if this uh, proposal is accepted uh, by the government, then the transition uh, is, is really, I, I would suggest it be redefined or, or in those discussions. If you follow the uh, uh, contract requirements and the ODEQ criteria for uh, flow volume, pressure, and uh, fire code, then those improvements, meaning the tanks, the booster pump station retrofit, uh, and additional line size upgrades, that would take approximately one to two years to have all of those in place. However, if you take a look at the existing current level of service that they're providing with their current service, this current system, that can be achieved uh, essentially immediately within the transition period. There's a couple of very minor components that would need to be done. Uh, but we would be able to provide that current level of service. Uh, with that, uh, to answer any questions you might have. Anyone have any questions? Uh, how do the two alter alternatives compare cost-wise? Uh, we have not completed the pricing on that as yet. Um, but our expectation is that the alternative uh, long-term will be uh, much more reduced, both in terms of capital cost and operating. When will this be presented to Tinker as part of this overall presentation? Well, because I, I understand the, somebody to say that Tinker will have a choice or a voice in this alternative versus what they have right now. When will that be done? Uh, the next presentation that will have the next level of information will be done in January. So, that will be to us, to the trust? The, this, uh, Mr. Chairman and Trustees, because we're making a confidential proposal to the federal government, the pricing that you will be negotiating needs to be remain confidential. So in the process of constructing the proposal, issues associated with pricing will be dealt with confidentially. But uh, there's two parts to this. One part is that there's a base system proposal for water and wastewater. The government can choose to accept only water or only wastewater or both. So there are cost economies from management standpoint overhead. If we do both, we could blend the cost for both. Otherwise, we have to stand up a base uh, management system just for one. We can spread the costs over both. The water alternative proposal that you just spoke of today is if we were to provide the service with our drinking water, that changes the cost structure on the water side should they choose to do water. They can choose to unwind either or both of these at any time they want to during the 50-year period and pay us for the unamortized value of the assets during that 50-year period. Those factors will be taken into consideration also. We have to use taxable financing, not tax-exempt financing, 
those issues also have to be addressed. These are all coalescing in December and January so that in February we can do private briefings with each of you concerning choices to be made concerning how we would present that information to the federal government in the proposal that you would authorize the general manager to submit mid-March. So we, it all coalesces in February as each of these pieces come together. And we would naturally anticipate some back and forth after a, a several months review at the, at the government level, um, coming back to us perhaps with negotiation, perhaps with the uh, firm response. Uh, I think all of those things can happen based on what we've, what we've heard from other utilities. Further questions? Thank you. Uh, are there citizens to be heard? Hearing none, we're adjourned. Thank you.